How you doing? I'm Sinead uh, and I'm a photographer that's based in Glasgow and takes photos of the Glasgow music scene. Excellent. So how did you first get into photography? Well, I used to promote gigs in Edinburgh. Uh, I hated the ticket split and, and all that sort of stuff that comes along with it. So I wanted to figure out how I could still be involved in the scene because I loved gigs and I loved music. I still wanted to be a part of it, but I didn't really want to deal with the more financial side of it. So my friend suggested I picked up a camera and I took it along one night. Don't get me wrong, the photos weren't really worth talking about. But I, from then on, I loved it. I loved being in that wee tiny bit between the band and the crowd. It was like a wee special place uh, that uh, you felt quite honoured to be in. Oh, amazing. That's really nice. That's <laughs> so cheesy. Sorry. So did you first start off with live bands and sort of live gigs when you first went to Yeah. This? It was totally live gigs. So it was about, um, it must be coming, I've been in Glasgow two years. Um, and then it was about a year and a half from there. So it's about three and a half years I've been doing photos all together. Um, but it was primarily music. Like the, I hadn't even taken a picture of a mountain, which is, I believe is called landscape, before like I'd even thought about photography. Um, it was all, all about music and started to get into it. Went to college and done an NVQ in it, which was, it was just, just, pure basics because I didn't really know what I was doing. I said, I'm still not quite sure if I do, but I try my best. And um, they teach you the basics, the CD stuff, which just kind of helps you along. Then um, just started going to sm smaller venues ask, and I, like sort of asking uh, bands and people and just trying my luck a bit with it because Shy Bairn's getting out, so you've got to go for it and just ask. And it just started from there. So what sort of equipment do you use? Can you talk me through the camera, like the model? Like, what do you bring with you when you go to gigs? Yeah, definitely. So when I very, very first started, man, like, um, I'm talking, I'm going to go geeky here, but like a crop sensor camera. So a crop sensor camera is fine, but in low light, you'll get a lot of noise, which is the pixelated stuff when you get into a dark room over your pictures, which can look cool, but... When you, it can look cool in the background, but when you get to the faces, it starts to pixelate a face and makes it look like a robot a bit. So it's not, I, it's not always ideal. You combine that with a flash, it does work, but in small venues, it can be a bit intrusive. So you've got to be careful with that. So I'd say, um, I started with a crop sensor, a kit lens, which was an 18 to 55, and it was a Canon 1300D. Uh, and it, to be honest with you, uh, see daylight, uh, it got me in, in certain amounts of low light, it did brilliant. Um, but then I got a hold of a 50mm Canon prime lens, oh my god, that changed my light and that changed my gig photos. Um, it was 1.8 so the aperture was wide open which meant basically in low light you get less grain. But also, it was a prime lens, so there was no zoom in. You had to get right in there and about it. Like, there was no fucking about. You had to get right up into the gig, into the noise. And I think that was, like, easily, like, especially for starting off, 50 mil all the way, just because, especially with prime, there's no zoom in, so it'll get you stuck right in there. Amazing. For better or for worse, but it was only better. Like, if you like your gigs, it's only going to be better. Oh, wow. So, so you are very new to photography essentially in the timeline of things that's yeah. really that's really exciting that's really cool um, I know. I'm still like four, definitely still in the, like about coming up four years still a newbie like so here's the fun question so what sort of bands and artists have you worked with <sighs> oh man obviously you'll know yourself the Glasgow scene is incredible and it's not just about the bands it's about the bands and the crowd and it's about the relationship they have and it's about capturing this madness and being underneath these bodies flying around while the singer goes into the crowd and while the, like, the, the crowd goes into the stage it's incredible um I think the bands that I've worked with that I love got, got a lot of time for like Basket and Baby Strange Rolly Mo, Alt Gallus, I mean, the, the, there's so many bands that are great, but like um, live 
as well is a huge one. Amal and the Sniffers is a huge one for me because I'm a huge fan of Amy and just the whole band in general. But just she's five foot. She does not give a single solitary hoot and just jumps into the crowd. She commands an entire thousands of people and it's amazing to witness. She's such a force and uh, idols for the same sort of reasons. For a completely different reason, like um, Cortinas, because they're like, a, you know, they're an old school indie band. People love them. I love them when I used to go to tea in the park all the time. You know, like it's a, like it's almost like rom- like a romantic thing. Uh, then Tom Jones, because he's still got it. He's still got it. Mm-hmm. Like, and Miles Kane's good as well, because he plays up to the crowd. Strange Bones, because, yeah. oh my God, just like their gigs are unreal. Amazing. Snack. Yeah, like sports team as well. Sports team has got a real um jagged esque thing about them. Like um, Alex Rice just really again commands the stage of, and Lucia does the same thing. Like just really commit, like completely owns it from the moment they put a toe on it. That's it's quite uh, nice to see some big names in there as well. So how did you actually get into shooting at live venues and how do you well go about shooting a live venue? Because obviously you said you started up small and then you're obviously naming all these bigger places. Like how do you go about doing that? Yeah, um I think honestly to God, um it's it's shy grounds getting out all the way. I've asked I asked the the majority the when I first started, I asked a lot because you know, obviously no one knows who you are, but you've got to ask. The worst people can say is no, and then bonus is that you say yes. So when I started, and I'm like, I would hit up, um, well, I would ask my friends that I knew in bands, they would let me come along, see if they were uh, either headlining or supporting, and depending on who they, if they were headlining, if they were supporting, I would find out who the headline bands were. I'd speak to them, it's like constant networking but it just doesn't feel like it's a job because you're just introducing yourself and you're just going hey can I take some pictures sometime and honestly 99.9% of the time that everyone's like sure why not who doesn't like a you know like a, a picture like it's fine um so it was like going to Sneaky Pete's um Bannerman's and then Hidden Door uh, then got to sort of shoot like Young Fathers and stuff like that and then um, started going through to Glasgow now and then, you know, just, so it's just networking because Sneaky Pete's and broadcast, you know, you sort of, if you find out, like the scene and where the, um, if, if you've worked at a venue, if they've got a sister venue in Glasgow, anything like that, and just kind of network that way and look at the promoters that run the gigs. Um, but I always highly recommend going to the bands first, if you can, because it just, it's just, it, it works out a lot easier I'd say. Totally and it's and it's that networking thing when you work with one band the bands talk as well and bands play with other yeah. bands and they're like oh who did you use for your photos there oh we use Sinead oh who is she like give, give us our contact details so we'll, we'll go ahead and work with her that'd be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah no exactly totally. I mean it's it's good as well like um but I think I just getting out there I think the best thing that you can do and all that is if you're if you're a fan of the music the band ask them like, like, give them a message, like, and ask them, you'll find that the majority of them are sound as anything, and they just want to, like, um, I, they're, they're, they're fine, and they just want to help you out. I mean, I ha- I've never actually in my whole life had anyone that's just went, no, like, go away. <laughs> you, like, you might get patched, and, like, but that's, even then, I think I hit up, speaking of your t-shirt, I hit up Yanis once, like, uh, can I take a photo of SWGC on his Instagram? Like, no, not like it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I did the same with um, Amal and the Sniffers and got a pass. So it, it, it can depend. So obviously, shooting at live gigs is a big part of what you do, but you're also involved with like creative photography as well when it comes to bands. So can you talk me through like what that is and what you do? Yeah, definitely. Um, usually, well, obviously you make friends with bands who are doing their gig photos and stuff and then they might ask you to do promo shots and promo shots could be something like an EP, a single or in general stuff for their social media, for their Twitter, for their um, even <coughs> even a tour poster like a tour announcement, any kind of socials especially Instagram um, 
So that's like a series of photos that could have a theme or not. They're usually about 35 to 40. And um, to find out a, an idea that I suppose is, is good for both of you is you just meet up with the band. Like um, the best Info, like the best advice is dialogue, speak to them, get a conversation going, bounce some ideas off each other, go go for a pint if you think it's appropriate and, and you're of age and whatnot. Um, just, you know, go and meet up with them, chat with them, find out what photographers they like, what fit, like, especially listen to their own music, like uh, uh, their lyrics, find out like, do they like gritty stuff? Are they any like sort of, you know, do they want something slick? Um, like a studio with a clean background. It, it, honestly, the, the more conversation you can have, uh, the better. Um, even if even if it's something like a color palette, it sounds so simple, but like a color scheme, they like uh, like you know purple green, whatever. Um, you can usually look up stuff like that. Look at other photographers. Instagram is brilliant for stuff like that, especially color palettes, and you can just get an idea. But the, honestly, the best thing I can offer is to uh, ask them what they want. If they say they don't know, that's totally fine. Um, that happens. And then just come up with a few ideas yourself um, and they'll either go for it or they won't. If they mm -hmm. go for it, yes. If they don't, then, you know, like that's that's fair enough. And then find out, you know, what they, what, you know, uh, if they didn't like something about it or what would they prefer and just go for that. A lot, and usually it, it does like work out in the end a lot of like back and forth or sometimes you can get like the absolute golden ticket you go and just do what you want which is a blessing in ways but also like uh, you're completely on your own which is good but if you know it's it's a big risk if you've got to make sure it's good <laughs> if that makes yeah. sense because <laughs> yeah. if it doesn't then it's just there's absolutely nobody to blame it on yeah and and then maybe the band won't actually use what you've done yes. so, so. yeah definitely i think i think you can't go wrong as long as you go back and forth and even if you've got an idea go back and forth uh, like go back to the band go right okay i've came up with this what do you think they'll go yeah or nay and then go from there but ju yeah just get just get a bit of conversation going it'll help your confidence as well knowing that you've went back and that you've got right okay i think i've gotten the best enough idea of what this band might want from their point of view like can you it, it gives you confidence to sort of go ahead with it on your own because you're like okay i've spoken with spoken with them and i think i've got an idea they've said they think i've got an idea and then you go for it so it does help excellent so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to make you host in this and then what we can do is screen share and even if you want to talk to some of the uh, give me a minute you might be able to see now yeah that's us perfect okay so I'm going to explain this photo for a reason. Um, it might not be the most like um, perfectly balanced photo of all time, but it's a brilliant photo to capture uh, an essence of what a gig is like. Sometimes it's not about perfect composition, perfect lighting, perfect uh, color balance. It's about capturing like a you know like a real atmosphere yeah. that was going on at the time. And I personally feel like this is a, a this feeling gig. And it was Voodoo's that I play in, and it was um, maybe about a year and a half ago, and it's definitely in broadcast. And, I mean, I'm not sure whose shoes that was, but they totally made the photo. If you look at this photo, there are people sailing through the air in the whole gig. Um, big fan of that because I think that's just as important as capturing the bands themselves. As you'll know, the crowd, but if you can get the crowd and the band together in the one shot, it's just like gold um, because it really does show a complete sort of panoramic version of what's going on that night. If somebody asked you how the gig went, you know, you would want to get as close to a photo answer as you could. And I think that's one of the kind of uh, ways you can do it is just, yeah capturing the, the madness that's going on which oh. makes me laugh every time I look at it because yeah. I, I see new things every time yeah uh, so I it always makes me laugh but go back for that and um, this is probably one of my favorite ones of all time um obviously big handsome Jack from Rascal Inn and this oh. was a like, King Tuts this pro, uh, was um uh 
I can't re quite remember what time it was, but I do know I had my arm in a stookie at the time because I broke my wrist. I'm not going to tell you why, but um, the um, it was I was on a bench at the very back of King Tut's to get that shot because I knew he was going to jump into the crowd because he always does because they've got that what's so good about Rascal and it's just wild and um, he jumped in and my Suki was getting annoying all night but it actually turned out to be a really good shelf to balance this camera on for a straight, oh, wow. a straight photo of him going through the air like that Wow! Um, so that was amazing and just look at like everyone holding him up I mean you just I don't know that's just a whole like photos like that are the whole reason why I, why I even got into it just to capture a moment like that it was just mm -hmm. incredible um yeah no that's a big one and the king cuts branding as well at the back which is excellent and um, cool. and you know what tuts is like as well it's like it's quite wild but the lighting is at the back can be quite difficult um so that was a cheeky flash number there but <laughs> sometimes it's okay sometimes it's not but it's fine but sometimes um, for the sake of the photo exactly exactly stuff it um uh, this probably, oh God, I wish I'd got a better version of that, actually. Um, I'll show you the one, that, that was Young Fathers. Um, again, oh, this wow. is it. It wasn't like, a, you know, it's not like the, the most amazing photo in the world. It's just the way the lights hit off everyone. Uh, Young Fathers are an amazing band from Edinburgh. You should always know who they are, but that was just a, a special gig. But the story behind that one is that photo, so... You'll probably get this when you go and shoot gigs. Um, sometimes when you get to the bigger gigs, you get like a first song thing or first three songs. So you've really got to get your act together in that certain amount of time to try and get the best shots, which can, uh, you know, can be possible, but like can also be quite mad. That one was a uh, one song and it was the first 30 seconds. So that picture was actually taken on the crowd, but I was at the barrier as well and I was on my friend's shoulder. So, you know, don't be shy to ask your friends or people that you know well enough or you feel confident enough for their shoulders or if you're a small guy like me or anything like that, because it, it does pay off. And that was the only reason why I got that good photo that night. So wow so just yeah. just to explain that further so as photographers when you go into um sort of gigs you're sometimes only allowed to be in the photo pit for one song or three songs i've never seen anyone longer than that to be honest to come in yeah. your snaps quick and that's you away you advance to it yeah totally so i like it depends if like you're a tour photographer you just know people it, one big tip it it never hurts to be nice to the security and you know all the rest of it because you find that you can jump you bump into them now and again and they, they'll sometimes let you in for a wee bit depending if you're not going to make a scene or not but anyway um the pit thing is most of the time when you get to the bigger gigs it is three songs no flash and then you can sort of go into the crowd and and that you know sort of do do whatever you want most of the time I think you know within reason, but the uh, the three song things hard when you go to festivals like Kendall, Transmit stuff like that you've probably got I don't know fourteen photographers in the pit with this huge guy on this mad I don't even know what the hell it is uh, this um, the video thing that take, you know that goes on the it's like little mini train tracks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's basically this humongous like camera is going back and forth with this guy in a train track you cannot get in the way because that's what's uh, filming the whole festival and then it's like 13 or 14 of you sort of clambering and ducking under each other so you can imagine what that's like for three songs what? which is you know like I said like essentially like I don't know eight minutes like it, it completely depends obviously but um you've really got to be on the ball and then yeah just go out into the crowd and and have your sort of way with it there so yeah you've got you've got to be on the ball but I think honestly if if you just 
spend a wee tiny bit of time looking at the venue, looking at just sizing up the venue, like sizing up your lenses to the venue and, you know, like see what the competition's up to as well. Like it, it's all right. If you go in there blind, sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. So I totally recommend doing doing your research if you yeah. if you can, definitely. Yeah. This was one, and um, this is obviously, um, this is just because it's, well, it's sports team and also, can you hear me okay, by the way? Yeah, 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 go for it. Right, the, the point in this is because, yes, I know it's saturated and it's not necessarily in focus, but I think that's what's good about it because you can really see that there's a lot of madness happening in this photo. He's absolutely going for it. That's Alex Rice from sports team. And I just really loved this photo specifically just because there's just so much going on. That gig was at King Tut's and it was absolutely wild. It was just one of the maddest gigs I've ever been at when it like spills onto the pit, which happens sometimes. <laughs> like people are like crowd surfing into you and all that. But I absolutely love stuff like that because you can just tell people really love the band. They really love the music and it's just such a good thing to like witness. But stuff like that, see saturated photos, if you get that burn, if you get that, sometimes it's really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And I quite, I like this photo because of that, like because it's so bright and saturated and a bit messy. And it shows movement as well. Yeah, exactly. Movement, movement's definitely good to show. Where are we now? I've got this one, but I'd pick, I wish I picked a better one, bear with me. seconds because we were speaking about uh, promo shots I suppose I could show something that's a bit different yeah okay. which is just an example of a recent promo shot that I've done mm -hmm. uh, this was Rascal and again and um, this was to uh, basically we were trying to do like a sort of TV on the blink like a transmission interruption and how I did that was we were in the studio and I brought our projector I downloaded projector backgrounds. So this is like, I looked at something like glitch photography, like glitch backgrounds, like SCART, you know, any sort of TV on the blink stuff, which none of you young pups will probably know about. Yeah. But um, like stuff like that, um, uh, any sort of, if you get a cheap projector around 50 pounds, you can literally download any kind of background you want on your laptop put it onto a person and it like it completely transforms it and then I just basically made that look like a contact sheet um after that and made it look like it was all television screens which was really really simple to do in photoshop it wasn't anything um spectacular or that but the result was really really good mm -hmm. well to me anyway I, I thought it looked really cool like they were all little television sets and and stuff so I really really enjoyed doing that one and that was this year that was about two months ago oh wow yeah so I, I really liked it was just really good to sort of get do something different like that as well and um, it'd be it's surprising what you can think of as props around you but I'd highly recommend getting a projector even just for experimenting like it's just really really amazing what it can actually like do it's pretty damn cool wow um, so here we go. It seems like quite a simple one, and it is, but um, it's just the angle. Um, I think everyone will know when they start taking gig photography that that's a really difficult photo to take. That's um, if that's James from Malt Disco. Yeah. That sort of a uh, blurred bit is his actual fist, and he's leaning right back. It seems like the most simplistic thing, but that was in the middle of a gig in the Priory, and Daddy, I will tell you that that is. Um, a very calm photo in a very wild place and a very yeah. wild gig and that's what I liked about it the the juxtaposition almost of um, such a calm serene moment with the light and the dark in the middle of what was honestly the, one of the maddest gigs I've ever yeah. went to my whole life in February um, that was their South by Southwest fundraiser and it was it was wild I mean I'll show you the um like another photo from that gig and you'll see what I mean yeah I was just well I was just thinking you know and I was saying sort of like the, the videos type stuff you know where you um, sometimes it's not always about 
getting that perfect shot. It's just mm-hmm. like getting the, the atmosphere in between is just, just as amazing. Right, here I am, I think I'm back in business. Right, here we go, right, we're back. Um, one of the other things I wanted to say was also, it's not always just about the band, like I was saying before, it's about the crowd. And um, this is probably one of the best shots I've ever got. And then I've realized I'm not even on the fucking phone to you anymore. The, this one here, um, this is a photo of a guy called John Stewart in the crowd. And this was at SWG3. Again, it, this is the kind of stuff that I absolutely live for is catching somebody like that. That was, wow. he was having the absolute time of his life. And so was absolutely everyone around him and behind him. And it was just uh, amazing. That was it in the flesh, um, which had uh, SWG3. It was over two floors and it had absolutely hundreds, like Baby Strange, Blind Eyes, um, Crystal, like loads and loads and loads of bands. Um, and it was just, I just, it was just good to catch something like that, which is quite a, a rare thing to catch, uh, to that extent, anyway. Wow. And that's again, that's just, it's not even you, it's not even that wasn't obviously, um, I don't know, like structured or anything like that. It was um, kind of just turning around and catching them, enjoying himself, and you'll find that if you point your camera in the the direction when you're in the pit at a crowd. They'll be absolutely brilliant and like give give you the shots that you really want to do and um that you really want to take, sorry, and have a really good time with. Can I have another one? Oh god bless John Stewart, like miss him. Good guy to capture in a crowd. Oh. And this is what I was talking about with Miles Kane. Um a while ago, uh, you just get some artists that obviously this is a wee bit saturated now, but you get some artists that are that just play into the crowd massively, and I could have shown a whole gallery of him doing stuff like that, which is brilliant. You get people that you know just do that uh, for photography, like um, sorry, at gigs, and they're they're absolutely brilliant at playing up to the photographers because they like it, and it's it's a dream when it happens. Um, and Miles Kane's definitely one of the one of the best for that. Like he, he really goes for it. And um, this was um, Viagra Boys as well. This was at QMU um, about a year and about a couple of years ago. Again, he's another amazing sort of person. Just a great band, but really animated and and frankly doesn't really give a hoot at all. Wow. And it's that's so good to. Um, you can just tell he just doesn't care like he could be like singing in his room he doesn't give a like a hoot about any ass like standing there he's just having a good time and it's good to see he's actually really quite good at you know like looking at the like looking in the pit for photos as well as and he's he's quite friendly and stuff so I just really like that one because he's just having a good time but he's (laughs) yeah oh wow um I know. I see. I've, I've, I had loads that I picked, and now I'm like, I should have picked more, um, or better ones. I mean, have these ones been okay so far? Would you say these have been great? Don't worry. Um, especially with the way you explain things, I'm learning. <laughs> oh, this was um, this was a dance at the um Priory, obviously, but the it was the BBC gig, which was the Dunch Rascal and, and Baby Strange. I think it was a couple of Januarys ago, maybe mm. 2018 or 19, but either way, it was crazy. It was sold out from the get-go. It was absolutely mental. Like, there was people sailing over the air. They had three BBC camera staff in that had clearly never been to, like, they really never knew what they let themselves in for because they were absolutely terrified, which was hilarious. <laughs> and just like everyone just, um, oh, everyone was going mental, but it, in, in a good way. And that was one of, one of the wildest Glasgow gigs I've ever been to mm-hmm. by far. It was me, Tam and Scats, <laughs> at the, like, in, in, like in the band, like over the barrier and they were looking at each other, signaling each other like Nam because it was that busy that wow. we couldn't move the way we wanted to move. It was like you move one way and I'll get in that way. Yeah. So I'd like give the nod to Tamar Scats and he'd run over and then I'd run over where he was. It was crazy. But oh that was so exciting though. <laughs> like I just thought oh, it was wow. brilliant. 
Yeah. Um, and when I, I remember a girl like Alicia, she sailed right into one of the BBC guys, like crowd surfed right into one of them, and he just he looked so perplexed, and I thought it was just brilliant. I was like, oh mate, Aww. oh bless. But it was it was a really good gig, and obviously dancer class. I've got a lot of time for <clears throat> bands that sort of uh, that reaction that bands provoke, especially local bands. And the crowd is fascinating. Um, it's it's just mental how, like, they go so crazy. I, I love it. It's amazing to witness. Um, I just I absolutely love uh, shooting bands. Like, there's there's no getting away from it. It's anyone that likes a gig. It's getting into the closest proximity that you can. Like, mm-hmm. almost being like a a filling in between a sandwichy madness. It's amazing, just to even be anywhere near that at all. <laughs> an absolute buzz as well i know it's great i, I do get a buzz off of the like sort of other folk um watching it as well and the next one which yes this do you know the bbc gig i was telling you about this yeah. was a ruby strange shot from it so wow. this is ethan and this is johnny like do you know johnny's guitar in his hand and um, yeah, that again, Pridey's, I, I don't know, what the, like it's a small venue as in there's not a lot of place to move about because it's always packed, like when it comes to gigs as well. And it's like a photo like that, I, I, you never know um, that I was literally like, I think I was like kind of sandwiched under a barrier. I, I don't really wow. know, but it was so worth it to get that composition. Um, you know, it was just, I, I've I've got on my wall that that photo in the flat because it it's just a that and um, the rascal in one I've got on my uh, wall just because it, it I just think they're good shots but yeah just getting stuck in you'll you'll know the line between getting stuck in and getting in the way there's a very fine line um but there there definitely is one and you definitely know when it is. Mm-hmm. Cause usually it's when like a guitar comes like flying over your head or something you're like right. I need to get a, like a wee bit move back. Um, if I get this last one, this actual photo, I'll say it to because it's it's been entered, it's been shortlisted for the Wex Student Photography Awards because it was only a student last year. I'm going to be a student again next year anyway. But um, yeah, it was uh, so. Usually there is a Wex Student Photography Award, which I'm sure you will all find out about. But this one was um, for a theme be- called Because of Love and Music, and it's got shortlisted and it gets announced on Tuesday. Oh. And I'm, I'm a little nervous, but I'm trying. I'm one of those folk. I'm just like, oh, just forget about it, just in case so you don't put yeah. all the eggs. But it's pretty damn exciting to be, um, you know, thingy, well, put forward for anything, to be honest you know, all that kind of, like, competitions and stuff like that, it's, it's, even whether you win it or not, you get, you get some really amazing feedback sometime, I've only started doing that this year, mm-hmm. and I really wish I'd done it as, as soon as I could, you've got things like uh, Lens Culture, uh, and they do things like uh, black and white photography, competition, um, landscape, any, lots of different kinds of themes, but you can, there's so many, like, prizes that can go from, uh, you know, getting like photography equipment to oh, getting wow. an exhibition in London, to getting exhibitions in Paris, New York, like go to lens culture, go to every single thing that you can, photography for com- uh, competitions, photography grants, yeah. just go for it. Uh, like it's it's all out there and like you're, you've got to be in it to win it. And I'm honestly, I have to say um, the lens culture stuff's really, really good and it's regular. Right, so this is probably not the best version of this photo. I do have prints of this, which are a lot nicer, but however, here we go. It's definitely the best live photo I've ever taken before. So oh, a little saturated yeah. than what I'd liked, um, but the ver- like the, that's it just depends on your phone, but it's usually not that saturated. But anyway, there's a good story behind this. Um, this was Idols at Kendall Collin, oh, wow. 2019. And um, this is by Joe jumping at, not, not Joe, sorry, but jumping, Bowen, Mark Bowen, jumping at the crowd. And um, if you look behind him, the other photographers are behind him. He jumped in about halfway through and started running towards 
were just photographers and everyone jumped out the way and uh, I just I just knew that it was just like a you've got to just so I started running backwards when he was running forwards towards me and there was no other photographers that were you know that were in the pit behind me by then and I just took the photo and it was by far one of my favourite photos I've ever taken. Wow. It just shows how much he's loving playing to the crowd, how much the crowd loves him. There's just so much going on and it just feels like a real moment. I, I, I'll i never forget being there and absolutely kicking my pants because I was like, I am going to get, well, if I get done in with his guitar, no wonder, like you should have got out of the way, you know, take, you know, just suck it up. But it never, for whatever reason, it never happened. And I did not have a big, massive zoom lens. I was really, really close to that. Um, I can't tell you how close, but um, yeah, it was, this wasn't from miles away. I was literally right in front of him. I could almost smell his armpits and it was a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was good to be that close. Wow. There's something about that, taking that risk. Um, and that's probably by far my favourite photo I've, I've taken of gigs yet. I'm always looking to try and top that one. Wow. So there there we go. I'll stop because I'll just go on all night. That's amazing. Well, those are really, really cool, actually. Um, I hope they were the good ones. There was a, a couple of galas I wanted in there, but you can't have it all. No. Um, but yeah. Anyway, never mind. Um, it just means that all the young people are gonna have to go ahead and go online and obviously check out your work to see. Exactly. So. exactly. So here is a question that I like to ask. Um, well, the females in the industry, because it is a big topic. Um, so what's your experience been like working as a female in music? Sure. Um, I've got to say, obviously, it's got its peaks and troughs, like everything in life. Um, personally. From me, I moved to Glasgow um, and again, didn't, didn't really know anybody and I, f- I grafted and I found that, you know, after the initial, initial like, sort of, like, who's that <laughs> sort of stuff, you graft and you do your worth, I feel like I got accepted and things were really good. That's from a personal level, but I know that things are different you've always got your old dads in the crowd that like who's this wee bam running about with a camera she will not know what to do but things like that are always a good challenge and a surprise I feel like anyone that thinks that you can that underestimate you because you're either a female or a daffy or both <laughs> um, and all you can do is surprise them like I'm just like well that's brilliant because and you know like literally clamp you with taking a good picture you don't even need to address stuff like that sometimes you can just ignore them and just answer it by taking a good photo I mean it, yeah it is I, yeah it is hard but in all honesty I just I just don't let it get I just don't concentrate on it I've, I've got a thing I want to do gig photos I want to be up there with the best taking pictures of the best getting right in and about there and there's just now that's going to get in the way of that I know that, like, so I just, I know it's there, but I just don't let, I just don't get into it that much. I'm just like, you know what, I just get on with it. Yeah, and have a positive attitude towards it, because it can be hard, but, you know, at the same time, you do hear a lot of negative stories and bad stories, but it's not always like that. Um, there is, no, there is, there is loads of stuff, like, oh, there's, oh, God, there's so much bizarreness and whatnot, but... Um, just from a personal level, yeah, like people can be a bit snide in that, but um, I certainly don't let. I, I honestly, it's just what I for ducks back because I know I've just if you if you really are passionate about photography and you're that headstrong in your mind that all the other stuff going on in the background won't matter because you've got such tunnel vision about what you want to do, where you want to be, all that going on in the background is just white noise, whatever it's in regards to. Exactly. Um, okay, and here is the um, the COVID question because we are obviously doing these Zooms. Through, we can't obviously do this in person. We have to do it um, <laughs> in separate households and stuff um, because of COVID. So how has COVID nineteen affected you? Oh God, I'm sorry. Here, here comes the violin here, by the way. But um, obviously, I've got an immune disease, but it never actually got um, 
diagnosed until this year. So I used to be in hospital a lot with pneumonia and people just assumed I just wasn't looking after myself, which was nonsense. But at the same time, it was it was weird. Um, and then oh, I was in, in March, no, not March, I was in in March anyway, but not for that, January, I was in for five weeks and then I got diagnosed with this immune disease. So then I had to shield and I don't know, I felt, I did I'd like, I, I felt like I couldn't attack it the same way. Obviously all the gigs stopped, mm-hmm. um, even promo shots and stuff. It was all very weird. Um, you know, the bands and stuff, they didn't know what was going on with work or anything. It was all very hazy and everyone sort of didn't know what to do. So it was a lot of flakiness going on. And yeah, it was it was difficult. The, the saddest thing in the whole damn world, to me and all this is just the gigs. It's just no, not hearing live music anymore. That's just, I didn't realise how important it was. It, I knew it was important, but I didn't realise how it was got me to be functional until it wasn't there anymore. And I was like, man, I like the life is actually quite pointless with <laughs> live music at all. I mean, totally. You just find yourself like, well, what do I do now? I've got all this free time. And it's like, how did I spend my time? I would spend my time out and now I can't do that. And you know, you, you don't see people the way you would see and sort of acquaintances that you'd always see out, you don't even Yay. see anymore and you can't see. It's, it's been totally hard, you know, and obviously the restrictions and stuff changing all the time as well you're not quite sure whether you know you'll get a bit of work or maybe like actually it's total lockdown or you know the tears have moved so anything you had planned you now can't do so you postpone it and stuff so it's been a rough uh, year essentially it's been such a long moment. Well, the last I was, you know, the Walt Disco gig, I, I showed you, I could have shown you a gallery then because that was just amazing. It was the same mm-hmm. night as Ivy Nights and Miranda's Night as well with Stony Max, Nash, and Bloody Hell, another band. It's a beautiful girl. Oh, anyway, um, it starts with an L. It's going to annoy me. But anyway, um, yeah, that, that gig was the last gig in February and just, that seems like a, a, a decade ago. It really does. Mm-hmm. Like the um, fundraiser at Friday. What the hell? That was so long ago. Yeah, a different world. Um, so, okay, so the last question is, so what are your general tips for young cats wanting to get into the industry? Um, yes. No, like it's definitely just the, the main one is get right in and about it. Like there's no, no like messing about with that. Be sound, obviously, but be bold. Get right in there. Like, see the, think about all the other folk in the pit. They're all going to be going next. If you look at the pit and look at everybody else, it's all the same level. Look at, <laughs> look at speakers. Ask to climb onto a person. Look at stuff. If you're a small guy like me, that's what I look for. Is how I can climb and get different angles. Just get that edge. Um, get find your own edge. Get it, and then work on it. But just get stuck in there. Have fun. Enjoy it. You'll find that when you enjoy it, you, you just think less about what you're doing as much. You have a good time and your photos are better, honestly, because you're having a good time and because you're literally capturing something in a flow. Um, yeah, just don't just don't be afraid to get like stuck right in there. Like that mosh pit, if you feel safe enough, go for it. It's absolutely how you get the photos. Um, yeah, again, there's plenty of shoulders there. Ask if you can go on a few. Um, yeah, just uh, get get to know the, get not just the bands, um, get to know the venues, promoters, security, bar staff. Like, it all helps to, you know, it's just nice to be, it's nice to be nice. But I, the whole reason why we all got into this is because we love music. So don't forget that and just enjoy it. You're at a gig, it's the best. You're at the best, you're at, you've got the best seat in the house, more or less. So just enjoy it and just get what you can from it. I think. That's exactly it. 